Evan Bray has led the Regina Police Service as chief since 2016. He's the 14th person to lead the force, lead the force since 1892. He joined us today on Instagram. Thank you for taking the time with us today. Chief I'm very grateful to be here. This is awesome. It's good to chat with you guys. I've watched a few of your videos. You guys are pretty good interviewers. Some pretty tough questions, though, so I'm a little bit worried. Eh, don't be worried. <laughs> Usually nobody gets stumped. Uh, we, okay. We've had a few. Just a few. <laughs> like, only a few people are getting stumped by our questions. I think we've only okay. got a few times. Okay. Um, how many people are on the other side of your camera? watching you do this in your office today. Two. I have two people in here joining me right now from my media section. Cool. This is her, uh, the, the name's Ms. Elizabeth Popwich and Mr. Les Parker. They both work in, in the uh, media section and they're right there. Hello. Hi. Hello. 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 How many people? How many people do you guys have watching you right now in your room? One. Oh. Our editor. Your, your editor and producer. Yes. The or dad. The, oh. Or dad. Okay. <laughs> uh. Why do we see people driving their cars while staring at their laps? Does it mean Regina has the most attractive laps in Canada? <laughs> That's a very good question. I wonder I wonder that myself because I see it often too. But uh, you know what? It's all about distracted driving. And I'm just going to grab my phone because almost everybody today, of course, has one of these. And certainly people that are driving vehicles often have one of these. And it's very tough when you're driving and you hear the beep go off not to pick up your phone and check and see who sent you a message or who's trying to get a hold of you, right? Very, very tough. So people need to be very disciplined and uh, make take some very good steps to keep themselves safe because distracted driving, as we know, is a very big safety hazard in our community. Lots of accidents happen as a result of people using their phone while they're driving. And there's some fairly expensive fines for people that get written a ticket by one of our police officers if you are caught using your phone while you're driving your vehicle. So those are all really good reasons why you're right. We shouldn't stare at our phone, our lap, or anywhere but the road in front of us to make sure that we're staying safe. If you have any questions for the chief, just ask them in the chat or click the question card. Listen to the chat because then I can actually see them and be like, oh, hey, look, before my dad writes them down, I can just say it. You guys have got this down to a science. Yes. We have got it down to a science. Um, Kelsey Payne asked, what are, what are your thoughts about, be, about the officers on TikTok? Are you guys on TikTok? Uh, yes. Well, our channel is, we don't watch TikTok. I see, I see. Well, you know what, I'll tell you what, social media in general, and this is exactly what we're doing right now, social media has become such an important way to communicate. And sometimes communication is about getting serious messages out. So we were just talking about distracted driving. But I think other, other times, it's just about communicating like we are right now and having a conversation in TikTok uh, or Instagram. Yeah, we're reconnecting. Technical difficulties. Is that just a commercial break, fellas? <laughs> I don't know. Nobody knows. I think I think it just crashed. Uh, okay, so when my daughter, daughter Jarek asks, when my daughter gets older, how does she join the police force? Very good question. And I'm happy that we've got some uh, young professional type people in our community that want to join our police force. I'm wondering if maybe you two might be considering it as well, but we can I'll talk about it a little bit later. I'm um, down for hockey because I'm down for it. 
Okay. Okay. Well, that's good. I'm going to sign you up on my recruit sheet here in just a second. So, okay. you know what, if you're interested in, in working with the Regina Police Service, I always tell people it's important to be thinking about it, even if you're still in school, because the decisions you make when you're growing up often are ones that help you if you are wanting to pursue a career in policing a little bit later on. So making good decisions, being a good leader in your school, in your classroom, with your friends, treating people with respect, respecting different points of view, all of those things that you can do as a, as a young adult like yourselves or our friend here who, uh, who wrote the question in are things that will really help you uh, become a police officer later in life because becoming and working as a police officer in the city of Regina is really just about being able to work with people and work with our community. And so there's all kinds of good information on our website about recruiting. I always encourage people to check that out. It's reginapolice.ca. You can check out the website. All the recruiting information is on there. And we're always happy to sit down and talk with people that are potentially interested in working here. Um, we will put the website in the description down below for the YouTube video. Nice. Nice and job, click fellas. Click on it instead of just typing it up. Click on it. I like that. Just click or on it. Or just copy and paste it. Um, yeah. Okay. You were in the media prior to joining the police force. What drew you to policing? Well, that's a good question. You know what? I've wanted to be a police officer since I was five years old. That's all I ever wanted to do in my life. And I applied to be a police officer with the RCMP while I was in high school. And uh, they said, well, we're not hiring right now. So you might want to find another job to do. And uh, once you uh, once we start hiring again, maybe we could look at that. So out of high school, I got into broadcasting and I worked as a radio announcer uh, and I did the weather on TV, on global TV for a short while. And uh, while I was doing that, I met a few police officers from the Regina Police Service who convinced me this would be a good place to apply. So I did 25 years ago, applied to work here and uh, been here ever since. Um, Sony Strawn asks, how long have you been a police officer for? 20, 25 years, right? Yes, you. That's very good listening skills. I'm in, I'm impressed. You were listening to my answer. Uh, 25 years, and I've been uh, a chief of police now for about three and a half. Uh, Kelsey asks for quarantine. How are the police officers protecting themselves? Good question, Kelsey. Awesome. So we are taking a lot of steps to try and protect our police officers because, of course, they have to still go to work. So they're. Each and every day you see police cars driving around the community, we make sure we equip them with all the personal protective equipment they need. So the masks, the glasses, the gloves, the uh, smocks that they can wear over top of their uniform. So if they have to go into a situation where they're going to have contact with someone, um, then they can put their protective equipment on and they're protected. But along with that, we're doing a lot of cleaning in our police service. We have staff, that's their full-time job, is to continue to keep our police service clean. So we're wiping down areas where people, multiple people have been touching. We're doing all of our meetings through video conference, stuff like this, so that we're limiting the number of people that are together in a room and really protecting our officers who are out on the front line dealing with emergency situations in our community. So that is a very important question. I'm Thank you very much for asking the question and uh, I can tell you that our officers are continuing to be well protected and able to to serve the needs in our community. Uh, uh, Kote Lynn says thank you for all the, uh, you do Regina City Police. Well that's nice thank you for your support it's always and, great to have those types of support supports. And, sorry. You go. sorry I was just Waiting for a break. Uh, okay, okay, wait. You keep on going. I'm sorry. Sorry for interrupting. Keep on going. I Yeah, no, that's that's all I just wanted to say. I appreciate the support. Lots of people are very appreciative right now of all of the essential services working in our community because uh, police obviously are one no different than nurses and doctors and paramedics and firefighters. But let's think about those people that are working in grocery stores in this really tough time when everybody's a bit worried and anxiety is high, we still have to eat. So being able to go to grocery stores and get gas for our vehicles, those are essential workers as well. And I'm very appreciative of them doing this work in our community. My 
teacher Ashley Myra has um says uh she has an eight year old who would like to know how the police are helping with COVID. How we're helping? Well, we are doing a lot of different things. We're using all of our social media platforms to remind people about the important things like social distancing and uh, the, the importance of staying at least six feet, feet, uh, six feet apart when we're visiting with our friends, um, about not going out and doing shopping if we don't need to. And if it's an unnecessary trip, that obviously can cause some health risk to other people in our community. The importance of self-isolating for people that have just traveled from another country or even part of Canada. All of those things are important things that we're doing, but we're also working with public health for people that aren't following the rules and we're going out there and having conversations and in some cases we might have to write a ticket if people aren't following the rules so we don't want to have to do that we hope that people do follow the rules and and again being able to talk about it on here with you two fellas i think is a good reminder for people that this is what we all have to do right now to stay safe um so hey bob that's one of our friends who just joined <laughs> What, hey, is, what is the one moment from the force's work that even when you hear it, you cannot believe it and believe it and it makes you laugh? So basically, police story. So a funny story from, uh, from policing? Yeah, basically. Okay, well, that's a good question. Uh, you know what, there are there are some funny things that happen from time to time in policing and we uh, we obviously have a few laughs um, sometimes it's at our own expense as police officers because we get into situations that are a little bit funny. I remember um, we took an accident uh, one day, which uh, thankfully nobody was hurt, but it was middle of winter and it was really, really icy right at the corner of Albert Street and Saskatchewan Drive. And that's a pretty important intersection. And so a police car that was responding to that accident was pulling up and was driving in really slowly, but it's kind of sloped. And so the officer stepped on the brakes to slow down and slid right into the vehicles that were involved in the accident. And so had to call the supervisor. And so they called the supervisor to come. In the meantime, the supervisor showed up and the supervisor's car, guess what? Does slid into the back end of the police car. That's right. So, I mean, obviously not a good situation, but thankfully nobody was hurt. And we do have to be able to laugh about those types of things when they when they do happen. Yeah. Uh, if anyone has questions, oh, so someone just asked a question. Sask student students. So, what do you do if ten to fifteen people playing in the ground, playing in the ground, mostly in the in the evening evening in parks, more twenty. People's play. I that makes no sense. Large groups of people playing. Oh, large right now. Right. Oh, yeah. Groups what do you do if like large groups of people are playing? Yeah, that's a good question because the public health order that's out right now says you can't have groups of ten people or more together. So if you have a group of people that that get together that's larger than that, then you're breaking the law, which is really weird i think for us to think about right we're used to especially in the warm weather we want to get together with our friends we want to play outside we want to go to the park and normally our families would be encouraging us to do that so this is actually a little bit of a different way of thinking about it but it's very important that we we pay attention to that law because it's it's in place for everybody to stay healthy so if our police get a, get a call about some group of people gathering, and we had a call about that just last night in one of the parks, we'll send officers out there. We'll uh, walk up and talk to at a safe distance. We'll talk to the group and we'll say, hey, just a reminder, you can't be gathering in large groups in the park. Uh, this is something that we have to do to stay healthy. And people will go on their way. I think oftentimes what happens is people don't go out planning to meet as a big group but they'll ride their bike and they see a couple of their friends and before you know it there's a few of them at a playground or in a park and they're just stopped and visiting so we really have to make sure that as families we educate our children we educate everybody in our family to stay healthy and remember it's okay to visit from a distance but you can't get together in large groups so uh bob millet uh says so uh, uh Wait. Do you want me to do so, this? 
he told us to ask you about your time as a referee and how it helped you end your police in career. Well, you guys did your homework, or, or at least someone did their homework. So that is right. Um, I was a hockey referee for many, many years, and uh, I absolutely loved doing it. And I absolutely do think that being a hockey referee did help me prepare for being a police officer. Because if you think about it, when you're a referee in hockey or any sport, um, you're out there with a group of people and you're being asked to enforce the law or the rules of the game. And many times the situation happens and unfolds really quickly and you've got to make a quick, quick split second decision based on your knowledge of the rules and there's consequences. So if someone hits someone with a high stick in a hockey game or a cross check and you put your hand up and blow the whistle, you're going to send them to the penalty box. No different than if someone in real life assaults someone, police officers might have to make an arrest and put someone in jail. And so there's lots of similarities actually between refing hockey and being a police officer. And I think one of the big things that I would like to also mention is when you're refing hockey, not everybody agrees with every decision you make. And so your ability to talk with people and communicate and help them understand why you made the decision you did is absolutely instrumental in that relationship. And that's no different in policing. In policing, we have to be able to talk to people, help them understand why we're making the decisions that we are. And ultimately, that's how we, we navigate and, and build a happy and healthy community. So there's lots of similarities, and it absolutely did help prepare me for this job. I just want to say this is kind of ironic. Bob's played hockey for a lot, a lot, lot of years, and he has never got a penalty ever. ever. What? You yeah. are kidding me! I've only gotten one penalty, and that was for tripping. And did you deserve it? I probably did. I forget. <laughs> I need a shot. No, you, I appreciate your honesty. You took the penalty before. I've like I've served a penalty for somebody else, but yeah. you said that I've never done a penalty. Well, I, you guys are just good, clean hockey players. That's what I like about you. He doesn't play hockey, so he's he automatically to. clean. Uh, uh, but I have fouled someone in basketball a lot. Plenty of times. Oh. You've almost gotten fouled out a bunch. Got four fouls once. Okay. And you can get up to five, right? I That was my goal one day, but I didn't get it when I was playing basketball. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I like that as a goal. I do, not like, I do not like the way this guy thinks. I mean, I've tried to hit people in hockey. It's just like, they, the ref never calls it. Uh-huh. Uh, we heard from my skills coach, Todd Listwich, and he says you used to be a hockey re referee. You also yeah. may not have seen eye to eye. <laughs> well, Todd Listwich, who is a great hockey skills coach, used to be a police officer as well. So I know uh, Constable Liskowicz very well when he worked at our police service. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, sometimes that's what happens. Police officers, or should I should say referees and hockey players don't always agree. What referees think happened, hockey players might think something else happened, but that's why the refs are there, to make a, make a split-second decision and call it like they see it. No different than us as police officers. Uh. So, what do you think is the most under, misunderstood part of what police do? That's a really good question. And, you know, I, I think what I'll, I'll talk about here quickly is that we, um, we do a, a program with grade three students in our, in our city called Cops and Readers. And in that program... Um, we asked those children in grade three in a few of the schools to draw a picture of a police officer and draw a picture of, of what they, they think a police officer does. And in the pictures they drew, they drew police officers shooting their guns and driving with lights and sirens on the car and uh, chasing bad guys. And after three months of, of reading with police officers and getting to know police officers and hearing a bit about police officers' families, then they were asked to draw another picture. And the picture they drew of police officers was them playing basketball with kids at a school and reading books with children and having supper with their families. And so I think what the answer to your question is, is often people think about police officers and all we do is catch bad guys 
Well, that is part of what our job is, but an important part of our job is building relationships in our community and helping people understand ways that they can stay safe and keep their their family safe. And that's a big part of the job that we do. And so opportunities like this to talk with you two young leaders in our community, I think is really beneficial for us to get the word out about things that people can do to help stay safe. Okay, uh, who I, whose idea was it? Was the program? It's. It sounds like it helps change perceptions. Which program? Sorry, I didn't hear that. Uh, the program you're just talking about. Oh, yeah. So Constable Jesse, uh, Constable Jesse Singh is a police officer who works in our community engagement unit. Um, he had seen that this program was done in a couple of other places, including Calgary with the Calgary Police and the libraries in Calgary. And so he thought, you know what, this, this sounds like a good program. Why don't we try it here? So uh, it's happened in Regina now with about four or five different schools and it's been a big success. Wait, I have a question. I may have remembered this. Did you go to Regina, did you go to Douglas Park School? Uh, like grew up, growing up, did I go to school there? Did you like for, for program? For a program, did you go? No, never mind. For the program, not the program. For, for yeah, eight. I don't think I don't think Douglas Park was one of the ones that we did yet. But I think every year they're looking to expand it. So potentially that is one that we could go to in the upcoming year. Our teacher, my teacher, uh, says, sounds like an awesome program. Way to go! And Makoto asks. When the officers go home, what is the procedure with COVID? Do they have to quarantine? Yeah, good, very good question. And I remember I was talking about that special protective equipment that the officers wear. That equipment really helps them stay safe. No different than when a doctor or a nurse comes into contact with someone who's COVID positive. They don't have to quarantine. They just have to take proper decontamination steps. So our officers obviously will will take off and discard the mask, the gloves that they wore, they'll decontaminate the glasses, and then they do have to do a really good job of washing up. In fact, in a lot of cases, they'll actually have a shower before they change back into their regular clothes when they're going home. We have a change room here at the police service for both our male and female police officers. And so when they're changing out of their uniform, they may have to take their uniform and, and give it a wash if they came into contact with someone who was COVID positive. But again, they do a really good job of making sure they're, they're cleaning themselves up before they go home. And that way their family is not going to be at risk when they get home. Because like most any other profession, our officers all have spouses and children and families at home waiting for them. And so we have to make sure we take proper steps to keep them safe as well. Jody Met, uh, Jody Met Bray asks, who is your favorite hockey player of all time? <laughs> well, you want me to let you guys in on a little secret? Jody yeah. Met Bray is a teacher from St. Francis who is also my wife. And so she is helping me out answer the question back to my coffee mug, Mike Bossy. You guys probably don't even remember Mike Bossy, but hopefully your dad does. One of the greatest New York Islanders of all time. And he's, do you remember him? Probably you remember him because he's one of the best goal scorers of all time, but he is my favorite would, hockey player. I would like to disagree, but... who, who are, Who's your team, you guys? You guys have a favorite team? Me? I have Vegas Golden Knights. That's why William Carlson's up there. Uh, oh, I, I, do ball, I do basketball. And by okay. the way, Gordon Hayward right there. Boston Celtics all the way. Okay, and, and what about, did I see someone in your family like the Ottawa Senators too? Oh, oh no! Yeah, that's what I thought. I saw that. I saw that. It's, well, everybody's got to like the underdogs. Uh, yeah, good point. How about the Riders? Do we like the Riders? Actually, yeah. We got free jerseys somehow. What? Yeah, by, uh... By um, doing an interview with Cody Vajardo. It's and actually pretty awesome. Air, someone yeah, pretty awesome guy. Yeah, the, her name is Ariel. She gave us free jerseys and it was so nice. Wow. Very nice. Impressive. Uh, I think this might already solve it, but 
Peak Performance asks, who is your favorite hockey team? New York Islanders. New York Islanders all the way. And let's not forget a good local, incredible young hockey player by the name of Jordan Eberle plays on the New York Islanders right now. So it's another reason to cheer for them. Yeah. yeah. Another good reason. A former Regina Pat, actually. Yes. That's well. Uh, you guys had a good research department there. I'm impressed. Our research department is me, me, and me, him, and him. We're not, and yeah. I just want to say this because Bob does not like this any much. He does not like the Capitals because they beat Vegas in the semifinals or, hey, they have- or finals. I no, it was the final. It was the finals. It'd be, it, I wouldn't be devastated if it was second. Uh, if it was, like, fourth. Uh, okay. Uh, how did you cope with John Tavares leaving for much better Toronto Maple Leafs? Producer Clark, yeah. Clark asks that. That was, uh, that was a sad, sad day in the Bray household. I can tell you that. Uh, really sad to lose Johnny T. He was a good captain and a great hockey player. But you know what? Uh, I know he's happy to be in Toronto. He's been playing well there. And uh, when we win the Stanley Cup, if he wants to get a picture taken with the Islanders still, I think we would let him do that. Okay. So. Uh, <laughs> okay. What about, nobody's talking, so I was like, just, okay. What uh, about Lou Lamarello leaving Toronto and making New York much better than Toronto? There you go. See, we've got a good little competition going on here just between your viewing audience, between the Leafs and the Islanders, which is why I always like having this conversation. Yeah. I Ashley, love Sweet. It's good to have him on our team. Ashley, we even have uh, Barcon J. Flurry, who's the unofficial mascot. Like, Furry. For a second. Furry. I'm sorry. Every single video, I mispronounce it. It's Whoa. okay. Don't beat yourself up. Don't beat yourself up over it. I don't know why. I always say, like, Hey, you know what? I, you know, I'm just going to tell you, this is, I like your technique there because you got a little bit frustrated and you just got up and walked away. The Do next you... time I'm having a press conference and one of the reporters asks me a question that frustrates me, I'm, I'm just leaving. <laughs> okay. Is that okay. Can I do that? Sure. Actually, no. I think that's good, think so... that's good technique. Well, for me, I'm a kid. Nothing happened. <laughs> For you, it's probably a really, really big deal. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for talking me down on that one. Cybray21 asks, what is your favorite food? Mine is... Cy- Who's Cybray21? Yeah, I, I feel like it's my family that's watching this show because Cybray is a police officer in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, who is also my son. Oh my also, who is also a big basketball fan, by the way. Woo! There's so many connections on the servers. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go with spaghetti and meatballs, my favorite meal. Pierogies. I'm gonna probably make like my mom's uh, chicken breadcrumb bake. It was like fake. I don't. It's hard to explain, but it's really, 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 really. Good. I actually, I actually made a cake with my mom. It was a school project, and it tastes really good. It has, uh. What is it? It's just cream cheese in the middle, and it has chocolate frosting on the outside. And it is, we can't get ourselves away from the cake. And it's a Packer cake. Wow. Sounds delicious. I'll have to give you my mailing address. I could send you a piece. (laughs) What about me? There's only two pieces left. No, there's not. There's like five. What? Okay, wait. Okay, how has COVID-19 affected police training? Was was not clear if it, if it was academy or officer's professional development. Yes. So uh, that's another good question because we've had to cancel most of our training. If you think about the type of training police officers do, sometimes it's sitting in a classroom and listening to someone teach, no different than at school. But sometimes it's hands-on training. So self-defense, for example, helping our police officers understand how to keep themselves self st- uh, safe from a self-defense standpoint requires officers actually putting their hands on other officers and 
and practicing like wrestling and different techniques. And so we can't do that during COVID-19. Yeah. And so we had to suspend all training. Um, we are still trying to keep our recruit class going because we've got recruits that are in training right now wanting to become police officers. And so we've gone to a lot of online training um, using video type training for those officers and we are hoping as we get closer to summer and they're close to being done their program that maybe this will be over and they can finish the self-defense part of their training and get them back out on the street where we need them because those young officers are are ready to be police officers and we could use them right now so i'm hoping we can get their training done in the next couple of months uh viewer comments cut if I say this wrong, don't ask. Viewer comments, Kyler McNichol. McNichol. We have a YouTube channel with over 100 episodes, but a, but a podcast is not out of the question. Uh, did you comb your hair for this? We asked <laughs> hey, I believe it or not, I did, I did comb my hair today. I, I, I have not. And I still have not, probably until this is your now. Your hair looks very nice. Thank You're, you. I'm yeah. one of the I'm one of the lucky ones because um, because my hair is this short. Uh, I can do this at home, and I don't need to go to a barber because I know a lot of people are frustrated right now. They can't get their hair cut, but I'm a lucky one. I can basically have it done myself. It's lucky, kind of, because I really wanted to grow my hair out, and hey, now I can. My hair is much I like it. You go uh, island. I like it. Somebody asks, what would what, what is, was your reaction when all sports were canceled because of COVID nineteen? I cried. I love basketball. I was actually kinda of sad. Yeah. I was sad too. Sad. I was I was do you think the Raptors were gonna repeat this year? Nope. Probably. Nope. Probably. Open. I was hoping, but I wanted to see the Islanders and make the playoffs. I wanted to yeah. watch the Masters golf tournament. So, like most sports fans, I was very, very sad when sports were canceled. And I was a very big sports fan, I think. I don't really watch sports. Often. I was sad. I just and follow then... the news. And until, like, a couple of weeks ago, I didn't even know that Cody Glass was injured. Uh, <laughs> oh, he was injured? Yeah, he is. I don't follow the Vegas golf um, okay, comment. Harsh Boothar says, thanks for serving uh, us. Thanks a lot for serving. And Kyler asked, what precautions have been added at police taking at crime scenes? Uh, as a result of COVID-19? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I, I think it's the same sort of thing. We, um, we often understand that, um, you know, the, it's the contact with another individual that can cause the contamination and potentially the transmission of the uh, the COVID disease, but also anything that's in the air. So sometimes when police officers go to calls, um, there can be situations where EMS personnel are on scene and they might have to do CPR on a person or they might have to give them medication that causes some of the, the respiratory um, air from that person to escape into the air. And so our officers have to wear a precautionary mask that's a little different than just those surgical masks. Um, it's called an N95 mask. So that, along with the other protective equipment that I've been talking about in the last half an hour, officers have all of that stuff to make sure that they're safe. But they even have uh, these different, they're called a Tyvek suit. So they're a one piece suit. They look like uh, almost like white overalls and they can put those on and they provide a real good layer of protection. So if officers like our identification officers who go to process uh, a crime scene like CSI, I don't know if you've ever watched the TV show CSI, but when those officers are out doing their work, often they have to cover their boots their pants, their shirt, they have to cover their whole body with protective gear so that they won't contaminate the scene and they won't themselves be at risk to anything that is at that scene. So there's a lot of work that's done to keep our police officers safe, for sure. How many uh, Scandin Scandinavian Blue asks, how many uh, police officers employed with uh, RPS? RPS? How many men, women, and K-9? Wow, good question. Okay, so altogether we have 
roughly 400 police officers. I think we're actually a couple over that right now. So we have 400 police officers. And I believe our number of female police officers is about 130. So we would be at 270 sworn male police officers and 130 female police officers. And uh, we're hoping, obviously, at some point in our, in our history, in our growth as an organization, we would like to be a 50-50 split between male and female police officers. As far as dogs go, we have, I believe, seven canine dogs right now. And we also have Merlot, who is a very special dog at uh, helping people that are going through a traumatic situation, typically children who are going through... <laughs> I'm here, fellas, but I can't see you. Do you eat donuts? If so, what's your favorite place for donuts? Hey, listen, I'm going to tell you, this is, a, this is the honest truth. Although I like donuts, I have never eaten a donut in uniform. That's a true story. Because there's such a stereotype out there about police and donuts. I've never yes. had a donut in uniform. But yes. I enjoy the other ruler, yes. Wait, what do you think about... Police stereotypes. Which one? Which ones are, are close and which ones are not? Police stereotypes? Well, yeah. yeah, I don't know. There's, I guess there is lots of stereotypes about police, but I think a lot of them are probably not true. When people get to know police officers, they find out, um, like sometimes I think people think that, that police are, uh, they, they don't like to have fun and they don't like to laugh and they're always serious all the time. But uh, that's not the case, obviously, and, and our officers, as we are out in the community and meeting children in schools and working with different community groups, it gives us an opportunity to show the personality that we all have. We've got uh, 400 police officers and then another 200 civilian police personnel who work here, and uh, I think we've got a lot of great personalities that work here, and uh, it's a good opportunity for us to, to get out in the community, to meet people, and uh, to build those relationships. Uh, have the people in the room start at, with you started tapping their watch at you yet? Uh, no, they haven't. They, they've been sitting here very intently listening to me answer these questions, and they haven't yet tapped their watch. <laughs> That's very entertaining. This is the longest, this is officially the longest interview I've ever done. Um, Jen? Jed Fenwick asks, the Raptors need to make a trade at the deadline. The Celtics did not. That's just what we added. The Celtics did not. Okay. Okay. Are you, Sorry, Jen. Are you tired? Who is your favorite pop, cu pop culture police officer? Uh, my favorite pop culture? Well, you know what? Um... So two questions, there are two answers to that. Number one, I'm a big Simpsons fan. And although Chief Wiggums is, uh, is not exactly the stereotype I want to live up to, um, <laughs> I like the Simpsons, so I like him. But there's a new show on TV called Tommy. I don't know if you've heard of it or not. And it's about a female police chief from the Los Angeles Police uh, Department. And uh, it's an extremely good show. So I would say Tommy and Chief Wiggums. Mine, I would say, I, here's one of my favorite pop culture police officers, because I watched Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I'm waiting for the new season. Jake Peralta is my favorite. I love him. And I, I love, love Brooklyn Nine-Nine is the best. I love it. I like Terry. Uh, yeah. Oh, my dad likes Terry from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I and that's also yeah. his name. Terry likes Terry. He likes donuts, doesn't he? Yeah. No, he likes yogurt. Yeah. Yogurt. Yogurt. Yeah, exactly. He is not <laughs> among the stereotype. Um, Kyler. Mm, I don't know. Who's Kyler, Kyler McNichol three asked, "What was your reaction when Prime Minister said speak moist?" <laughs> you know what? I thought it was funny, and I know now you can buy a T-shirt that says "Speak Moistly" on it. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day. I, I have to say, when you're doing a media interview, especially when you're doing a live interview, like even like we're doing right now, uh, the possibility of goofing up what you want to say or saying something that doesn't quite make sense is, is obviously something that happens from time to time. Um, I think it gave Canada a little bit of a chuckle in the middle of what's a pretty tough and, 
and uh, frustrating and sad situation. And so uh, he could have said worse things. And like I said, I might look to buy the T-shirt someday. Can some canine dogs, canine. dogs, be canine friendly? dogs, can be some friendly. Canine, canine dogs be friendly? Dogs. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Our, our canine dogs are, uh, are very friendly dogs, but we're always very cautious when the handlers are in the building uh, or out on a call with their dogs. Uh, we don't run up and, and pet the dogs like they're a family pet. We always wait for the handler to tell us it's okay to do that. Um, that's an important thing because sometimes the handler and the dog, they have a very special connection and the dogs don't know the difference between when they're working and when they're not, unless the handler helps them understand that. So sometimes, uh, especially when we're out in the middle of, of uh, the city and we're on a call, we have to be very careful as police officers because those dogs, although they're friendly, they're in work mode and they're only following the instructions that their handlers are giving them. So anytime, if you ever have one of our canine officers come to your school, for example, to do a demonstration, um, always ask the officer first if it's okay to pet the dog because you gotta make sure that it's safe for you to do that. Uh, what do you do when you're not a police officer? Pug. What do I do? Well, I, uh, I have lots of, of little hobbies. I mean, number one, you've, we've talked about uh, we talked about hockey. I'm a, I'm a hockey fan, so I like to watch hockey. And I'm even a little bit of a collector. When I was your age, I started collecting hockey cards. And uh, much to my wife's dismay, I still collect hockey cards to this day. And uh, yeah, I like, you know what else I like? I grew up on a farm. And oh. so I always like going out to the farm or out to the country. But I also like going to auction sales. I don't know if you guys have ever been to an auction sale. But I know what an auction sale is. I've never yeah. been to well, I'm a big auction sale fan. Of course, they're not having any right now because of COVID-19. But yeah. uh, when I have a day off and I have the opportunity, you can usually find me at an auction sale. Uh, so Ella Bray, 712, Mother Bray, asks, Bray. If, if, if ever Bray, Bray my, dad, my dad, plans, plans on doing a lip sync video, video for the, for the city, of, city vagina. of vagina. Evan Bray does not plan on doing a lip sync video for the city of Regina. I was quite proud of, of uh, the one that the Saskatoon Police Service did. I think they did a really good job. It was a fun video and we cheered them on. We even voted for them when they were in that competition. But uh, I think we'll have to find something to do that's a little unique for us here in Regina. I just want to say this. We broke the longest record. We have broke the longest record for our podcast. Are you tired of washing your hands yet? Uh, yes, my hands are very dry from using, not only washing them, but using isogel because here in the office we have isogel containers so that people can uh, quickly give their hands a sanitize if they go into a meeting or into a different room. And so, yes, like most people, I think I am a little bit tired of that. Oh, wait, your wife just put up a, like, uh, a link. A link. People watch that thing. Link. I don't even know Think. what it is. Think Link. I don't care. Just watch it. It's a YouTube video because it said mYouTube.com. Watch. Uh, okay. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, thank you for. Thank you. Uh, thank you for joining us. I got this. Thank you for joining us today. Yes. Thank you for joining us today. It has been awesome. And we would love to do this in the future. Please. Yeah. Well, I, I have absolutely love today. And don't forget, I've got a lot of exciting police officers that I work with. So maybe Wait. you guys are looking for another show. You could reach out through email and uh, we could maybe we could have a canine officer join you one day in the what future or another police officer if you were interested in chatting with someone else. I think it's great. What was that police website where we can sign up? That, that website, once again, reginapolice.ca. Cool. Click on oh, it. That's, that's more simple, simple than, than I thought it was. Yeah, very simple. Bye. Wait, 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 wait. Also, send all those police officers that might want to do it our way. Well, some of them are working, but we'll make we'll make time in the, in the months ahead here. To yeah, have one of them join you guys. Bye. Okay, thanks, fellas. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.